So the iPadOS 26 update that recently released has been a little bit controversial because there seems to be two different camps. You have this side, which is the camp that I'm in, which is I've been using the iPad Pro since 2018 as my main computer, and I've been yearning for true multitasking and windowing and Mac-like features to finally make it a true computer replacement. Or you're in the other camp, which is, hey, my iPad is just a tablet. I miss the simplicity of it. It's now way more complicated. Where did slide over go? What's this new split view that's kind of messed up and just overly complicated? So in this video, what I want to do is break down some hidden tips and tricks of iPadOS 26 to kind of alleviate both camps where maybe it'll make you miss split view and slide over a little bit less. And then on this camp, kind of help you really get productive with the iPad Pro with all the new flick gestures and all the new multitasking and the new file system. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about the best iPadOS 26 hidden features that nobody's talking about. Let's get into it. But now before we continue, if you enjoy videos like this one where we break down all things Apple, especially the new operating systems, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. But now let's get into the first thing, which is going to be the multitasking. Well, all right, let's get right into this. And just for reference sake, I am using the M4 13 inch iPad Pro running the latest public version of iPadOS 26. And we're going to be starting with a lot of multitasking and productivity style tips and tricks. So the first new update is that we can get up to 29 different applications, which is up from 18 on the dock itself. And to do this very quickly, you just long press, get into wiggle mode, and then let's start grabbing some of these applications and grouping them together and then dragging them down to the dock. And if I let go, as you can see, all but two of them were actually able to go into the dock. And you can see that the dock is now very, very small. And you can go down here and go to each individual application, of course, and then run them as you see fit. So again, that's brand new. The ability to have up to 29 different apps in your dock. And then when it comes to actual applications that are running in the background, so if I want to open up a bunch of these applications, you can have up to 12 different applications running at once in the multitasking view. So if I do one of these and then just start to open up different applications, make sure they're in this windowed mode, you can have up to 12 different ones running simultaneously before you start to run out of space. And again, you can resize them however you see fit. And then to get a good idea or a view as to how many are open, you can actually go and scroll up and then you get this expose view. So this expose view will break out every individual application and space it out correctly. So you're aware which applications you're running in one view because again if you are running 12 apps back to back to back it could get a little bit crowded and you won't really know what's going to be the 12th app behind this gives you a good and quick view but before we continue a quick word from our sponsor paperlike so if you've been following since the very beginning you might be aware that i've been using paperlike products for over seven years now it is hands down my most recommended accessory for any person getting a brand new ipad it does three things spectacularly well it of course protects your screen from scuffs and scratches, it's anti-glare, and thirdly, it gives you that patented paper-like resistance when you are using your Apple Pencil with your iPad. But now, Paperlike is back with their brand new V3, which shows off their new butterfly applicator process, which I gotta show you because it's absolutely amazing. So the hardest part about a screen protector is going to be the application process. And I know that a lot of people struggle with the dust, the bubbles, and the misalignment. And that's what this new V3 uses in their three-part system. First, you get the butterfly tabs built into the protector itself. Then there's a nice little helper tool, which is multifunctional. It's a card that doubles as both a dry wipe and a mechanical alignment frame. And then finally, the brand new app-like full screen digital instructions that walks you through every single step of the application process directly on the iPad. How this works is actually geniusly simple. You first clean your iPad with the included wipes, dry it off, and then align the protector using the helper card. Once it's in place, you simply pull out each butterfly tab one at a time using the smart hook, letting the protector glide onto the screen perfectly. And then to finish it off, you use the clever Pac-Man trick method to push out any bubbles from the center all the way out to the edges. And then the result is a flawless, bubble-free, perfectly aligned paper-like screen protector every single time with no stress, no guesswork, and you're not getting this big old plastic frame for a one-time use that you end up just throwing away to help you apply it. So if you've ever struggled to apply a screen protector and you've always wanted to try the Paperlike but were afraid to ruin it, now is a perfect time to try it out with the brand new Paperlike V3. Highly recommend trying it out if you do have an iPad. It'll be the first link in the description down below. Big shout out to Paperlike for partnering up with 9to5Mac over the last coming months and years. And now, back to iPadOS 26. And now a couple other things to bring up when it comes to gesture-based controls that are relatively new is if I open up, a, let's say, something like this application right here, where it is a full screen application. And if I go into multitasking, you can see that I have a bunch of different applications open here. Some are full screen, some are smaller, some are in the windowed mode. But again, something that people thought they got rid of is going to be the three finger swipe gesture, which you can swipe in between applications. 
it's still there, it's just a little bit different. So for instance, if I swipe to the left, I get the full screen app. If I keep swiping, another full screen app, another full screen app, more full screen apps, and then eventually it'll go into the windowed mode that I had before, which is all the applications that I had running before. So the windowed mode does work in terms of the three finger gesture, but if I say let's open something like this app right here, and we open up maybe another windowed mode application, so the app store, maybe something over here like the files application, you can see that I have three apps running, and I can swipe to the left, get back to my full screen, swipe to the right, get back to my multitasking view. So it still treats every single page as its own full screen situation, and the three finger swipe gesture allows you to go between either full screen applications, or again, your windowed mode applications. And then to continue on with the gesture-based controls, of course, if you do want to go into multitasking and do something like the side-by-side -side view, you can go to the green button and then go to split view to the left, to the right, above, below, even go into the quad box here, as you can see. But something new is going to be these new flip gestures. So for instance, if I go back, I can actually grab this right here and I can move it around with my finger. And if I swipe up, it goes into a full screen mode. I can then grab it again. I can actually swipe it to the right. It'll go into a split screen mode. I can then grab it again. Swipe to the other side, I'm now on the other side of it. And then lastly, if I do grab this one more time and swipe down, it actually minimizes the application completely. But another cool thing about this is if I open this one up and let's say I wanna open up another application here. So let's open up the files app. You can see that it is already in the split view and people are saying that split view is gone. It is absolutely not gone. As you can see right here, I still have this middle bar right here to move them back and forth if I want to. And even if I do grab this, so let's say I grab this and move it out of the way and make it smaller. You can see that, that that little middle bar goes away, but if I bring it even closer, it'll automatically bring it back even though it's not resized. So I can move this and then it'll kind of tie itself to that application, which is very cool. So if anything, I think the split view is actually a better version of split view that we had before. And if you wanna make it simple, you just go over here, long press on the green enlargement button and then press the split view. And then boom, you're in split view with this bar right here that you can then resize however you see fit and it's very easy to use. And then of course the last big update that I do like to share here is a new task or menu bar which is up here. So again, this was added, this is all brand new. And what I like about it is that it is based on individual apps. So if I open up Safari, if I go up here and go to the menu bar, if I just hold it up, you know, I can access my history or my bookmarks and go through all of this to make it very, very easy. And then it'll also give you all the sh keyboard shortcuts for each one of these different options. So go in here, learn it. Every single one will be a little bit different depending on the application, but the multitasking is just so much easier and so much more productive. And then one last little tidbit when it comes to multitasking and the gestures and again, going into your multi-windowed view, you can see that when I swipe up, these are gonna get flanked to the right and left. The reason it's doing that is because it's holding this window open for you to pick up another application. So for instance, if I wanna open up something like the home app, it'll open up the home app for me and bring those other apps in there for me. If I swipe up again, all the apps flank to the left and right. And if you wanna go into the regular home screen and you wanna get out of here, I can just swipe up and then they both leave again. So it's kind of like a two swipe gesture situation when it comes to this new window mode. So now I kinda wanna get into a little bit more of customization and setup because again, Apple did bring a good amount of customization tweaks to iPadOS 26. The first one's gonna be the default sound input control. So this was something that was huge for me as somebody who uses external microphones that plugs directly into your iDevice. So if you go into your settings and go down to sounds, you actually have this option right here where it says input. So if you press this input method, and let's say you have a USB-C microphone or maybe a wireless microphone that you use on time to time, it'll show up here and then by default, every time you plug in that microphone or connect that microphone, it'll default to that source as your input method for sound. So that's a way to set up your default sound moving forward. And then a question that I get asked all the time is my cursor. As you can see, the cursor did change a little bit with iPadOS 26 and went from that round cursor to this new, more traditional style pointer cursor, but mine is outlined in red. The reason I did that is because back in the day when it was a circle cursor, I just like to be able to do that to give me a better surface area overall. But if you go into general, go into accessibility and then scroll down to where it says accessories and then a pointer control, this is where you customize everything. First and foremost, you have the ability to change the pointer size. So I can make it as big as I want. So if I grab this, make it bigger, you can see that now my pointer is gigantic. I like to keep it as small as possible because it's minimal like that. You can also go in here and turn off the outline. So this is what it should look like out of the box, but you can actually change it however you want and you can even change the border width. So if I wanna make it even thicker, make it orange, or if I wanna make it as thin as I want, I can do that as well. I'm gonna keep it at red because I've been doing that for years and we're gonna kinda of go in the middle here. If I grab this, also the liquid glass is awesome. 
but that's what it feels like in that way. But then also what's cool is similar to Mac when it comes to this pointer, if for some reason you lose it, as you can see, it's gone. I can then go in here and shake it, shake it, shake it. And then the actual cursor gets bigger so you can find it easier. And then it goes back to the normal size. That's something that's straight out of Mac OS. Another cool setting is going to be in screen capture. So if we go to general, go down to where it says screen capture, you now have the ability to format that screen capture in HDR, which is something that's brand new. Definitely be aware that you're doing this in HDR. Some people forget that they change it to HDR and then the way that you work with the file with some external editor could be wrong. But again, it is now a viable option, which is great to see. And then another huge one when it comes to multitasking and productivity especially is going to be background tasks. So a big one for me was in LumaFusion. Whenever I would go into LumaFusion, and let's say I want to export this movie, we'll export it to the photos, we'll send it this way, and then you can see that it is exporting. If I were to leave this application previously, it would actually just quit out and then it would restart that export. Now, I can just resize it, move it to the background, and then do whatever I see fit. If I want to open up something like Safari, I can do that. So let's go to Safari, open that up, kind of mess around a little bit, go to YouTube, you know, go to Apple's website, and then I can just swipe up, Go back to my LumaFusion and you can see that it's still exporting the file normally. So all these background tasks will now work much easier and actually work as intended moving forward. I'm going to cancel this because I don't need to actually have that. But again, it's good to know that background tasks, background downloads, background exporting, background renders are all now working in iPadOS. And then of course we have the files application, which is something that did get a huge overhaul with iPadOS 26, making it a lot more finder like. But one of the best features is that you can actually set the default application whenever you are opening a certain file. So for instance, if I go on here, you can see that I can open with the preview app and you can see that there's a little default underneath that preview app. Now to change that, you go to get info, then go down right here to where it says always open with, tap on here, and then you can have the option for this file to always open with the preview app, with LumaFusion, or with the photos application, or the Affinity Photo application, which is something, again, that was exclusive to macOS, but now it's here with iPadOS, making it much easier. And then like I mentioned in a previous video, you are able to then pin folders to your dock as well, which is one of my favorite new options and features. And then not only that, there is a lot more customization. So I can actually right click on here and customize it however I see fit with the options. You can remove it from the dock, show in files, do the fan view, the grid view, and then also sort by name, date added and things like that. So I love this because it does truly make it feel like you are using Mac OS on the iPad, which is a beautiful thing to see. So those are just some of the features that I wanted to bring up that are a little bit hidden and that Apple didn't really mention in their keynote or mention in any of their paperwork where it's a lot easier to be productive on the iPad. And while albeit, yes, slide over specifically is gone, split view is still there and slide over does exist just in a different way. Cause of course you can open up, let's say something like Safari again, it's in full screen mode. And if I want to open up, you know, the home application and quote unquote slide over, just grab this, move it down here, and then boom, you're in slide over. It's literally exactly the same, it's just a lot more customization and a lot easier to view when you do end up in this expose mode. But that'll do it for these tips. Let's finish up this video. So that would just about do for this video, everybody. I think the beauty of iPadOS 26 is that you can be in both camps and still run it the way that you want to. Yes, unfortunately, the exact version of slide over is gone for now with iPadOS 26. Maybe Apple will bring it back. I know a lot of people did like that form of multitasking. But I do think that people will get used to this new form of multitasking. You still have all your regular modes, whether it is just a normal full screen mode, this brand new multitasking, and even stage manager has stuck around. And there are ways and forms and functions to kind of get around the fact that slide over is gone and split view is still here and it's even better and more enhanced. So hopefully this video kind of helped you kind of alleviate those issues or maybe again emphasize how much better the iPad gets with iPadOS 26. But leave a comment down below what your favorite feature is. Have you updated to iPadOS 26? Are you staying strong and staying with iPadOS 18 until they bring Black Slide over? I know a lot of people have been doing that, or at least mentioning that they're doing that. So let me know in the comment down below what you think. If you did make it to the end of the video, leave a little dolphin. Big shout out to Paperlike for continuing to partnering up with 9 to 5 Mac and supporting the channel. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, especially some of our iPhone coverage, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone. I love iPadOS 26. It's the update that I've been wanting for years, and I know a lot of other people feel the same way.